welcome to the North Witch Podcast with your hosts, Azario Flame and Sandra Von Holland. In this podcast, we explore all the things that can help us to be better and improve our lives in body, mind, and spirit. Looking at everything from witchcraft, sorcery, woo-woo, spirituality, biohacking, the mundane, and everything in between. We occasionally have on guests from various backgrounds, practices, and philosophies. We welcome everyone from all walks of life, from the left-hand path to the right-hand path, from the medical to the holistic, from the woo-woo to the scientific and everything in between. We have conversations and discussions about our experiences over the years, what works for us, what hasn't worked, and explore new theories and science, trying them out, seeing what works, and debunking what doesn't. Thank you for joining us on this wicked adventure along the crooked path as we adventure into the mysterious and wonderful world and welcome what truly works for us to become better witches, sorcerers, magicians, and our best selves so that we can live our best lives. May these conversations help you to ignite the light within. The views expressed by our guests on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of us here at Northwich Magic Co. All of the information shared on this podcast is anecdotal and shared for entertainment purposes only and does not constitute medical or financial advice. Always consult a doctor, physician, or professional in their field before trying any of the things that may be discussed on this channel. Magic and holistic healing should work alongside allopathic care when necessary. Welcome back for another exciting episode of the North Witch Podcast. On today's episode, we have Alexander Moore from practicalocult.com. Alexander is a practicing esotericist with over two decades of active experience in several occult systems, including Solomonic magic, conjure, and other folk practices and traditional witchcraft. He is proud to provide coaching, mentorship, and divination for occultists who are interested in taking their magic and their lives to the next level in a changing world. So how's it going today? Going pretty well. How are you guys doing? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> We're all revved up. We've been doing podcasts all evening. So <laughs> it's been good. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a good day. So what are what are you doing over there at Practical Occult? I mean, it's I've just been noticing the posts coming up. You got you're advertising some really cool stuff. It looks like you are, you know, really focusing on mentoring other sorcerers to, you know, kind of be their best selves. So what's your what's your approach with that? Well, um, I guess my I guess to, to give you that answer, I had to give you kind of the background of how that started. So for, for a while, I was um, just doing client work, you know, your, your conjure doctor stuff, you know, selling spells and whatnot. And uh, I, then, then, you know, the pandemic hit, right? COVID hit. And a lot of people I knew, uh, their lives fell apart. I mean, completely shattered. And I started to look at some of the occultists I knew. And, you know, everyone, everyone has this laundry list of opinions that they love to say whenever things are good about like what makes a good magician and the qualities that'll make you good. And, oh, you can't be a good magician unless you're X, Y, and Z. And a number of those people fell by the wayside. And, you know, it was funny because I thought to myself at the time that I would be, you know, sort of smug about that, but it was just, it kind of made my blood run cold when I saw a number of magicians just not, not living, not living well. I mean, people who I knew were good, you know what I mean? Like people who I looked up to genuinely and were like, you know, the people who were like, this guy can astral project better than anyone I know. And this person over here can, can really do this kind of magic really well. And so I started to think when this started about the few occultists I knew who were doing really well, who lived genuinely charmed lives in spite of the worst circumstances you can, you can think about. And so I, I asked them just, you know, cause I knew, you know, some of these people were mentors of mine that I was fortunate enough to have. And some of them were really good friends. And so I just asked, you know, like, why, why, why is your life not falling apart? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> love, love that for you, but, but why, like, what's the difference? And the answer boiled down always to, I enchant everything. I enchant my whole life. And they were, they were active, you know what I mean? Uh, they were, they, but they also had the right mindset, you know, to look at like how to enchant the various like the minutia of your life and a lot of occult systems and mentorship I mean a lot of people who taught me they didn't they didn't think in those ways you know what I mean and it wasn't the, uh, a slight on them it was just like it didn't come up you know what I mean they didn't go through a, a recession after recession or pandemic after pandemic when they were young they already had their their stuff seen to and so you know I started I started to look and I asked everyone I knew the details you know okay how do you do it what do you do when you're enchanting everything you do 
you know, what, what, what's, what's your, what's your outlook, what's your strategy, the whole nine yards. And I, I stacked all this knowledge and I decided after doing it, after doing some stuff for myself and seeing that it worked, I decided to uh, experiment by taking some occultists I knew who weren't doing so well from different traditions. And I was like, Hey, I got this idea. Just bear with me. You got nothing better to do. Let's let, let's see this. And so five of them turned their lives around completely during the pandemic. I mean, we're talking about night and day life change. And so I went to Allison, who's already a good friend of mine, um, who I was already starting to write articles and stuff for as her business was growing. And I was like, hey, I think this is good. I believe that this works. And uh, showing her the results from people I knew that I, that I did this for, she was like, okay, yeah, this, this does work. And so we started you know, brainstorming how to, how, to, how to sell it, how to present it, how to put it out there. And uh, that's, that's how that came to do it. And really what we do is depending on what magic you do, because also, you know, fully disclosed, it's not a teach you how to do magic thing. It presumes that you already do magic, that you already know how to do this. You know, because, there, because I saw this a lot. There's so many books and courses and really good stuff out there to teach you how to get from zero to intermediate or high intermediate even. But there's not much out there about what comes next or, or how to employ what you already have in your life. And frankly, and this isn't a dig, but it's something I saw. A lot of people don't believe that they can push it to that next level. You know, they'll, they'll see some parts of their life and they'll easily be like, oh, yes, I can, I can summon lovers, for example. I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at that. Or, oh, yeah, you know, I'm really good at the psychic stuff and I'm really good at reading and I can channel things like crazy. And some people are even like, yeah, I can get a job, any job, jobs I'm not qualified for. You know, I think we've all known a couple of occultists where you're like, <laughs> you you how do you work there and they're like magic my friend but um (laughs) but you know so I started to look at it and then um the final piece of the puzzle kind of came down when I met someone who was a life coach like the most woo woo new agey like I am your spiritual life coach person this is a friend of mine and and I kind of asked her I'm like okay look like people pay you a lot of money (laughs) for this like 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 people who own businesses pay you a lot of money for this like it's got to be there's got to be something to it and she told me her her basic thing and it said she has eight pillars of life which is your creative life your financial life your spiritual life your mental health physical health your social and romantic life your career and your emotional growth and she's like if you attack all of these things and she's not an occultist like she's not a magician at all but she 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 coaches the mundane version of this and she's like yeah if people if people approach all of these things equally the rising tide elevates all ships genuinely and so that kind of hit it for me because going back like backtracking in my mind to the people i know who live amazing lives that's what they do i mean it was so 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 simple an explanation compared to you know the year or so i took to to learn everything they had to do but that's that's what we do we take that and we approaching those uh those parameters we figure out a method of enchantment for given whatever magic the client does to grow their life in all of those fields and i mean i found that even just the first few sessions with people the things i'd have them do their lives would change i mean the thing because i mean there are certain foundations of enchantment for example that a lot of people don't think to build because it doesn't come up you know when you're learning you're kind of tunnel vision, you know what I mean? And you're, you're focused, I think, a lot on just getting better at magic because it's so cool and it's fascinating and it's thrilling. And every time you succeed with magic, you're, you're reaffirmed in your belief in how cool it is and how good this stuff is. And it's easy, though, to ignore the parts of your life that aren't so great. You know what I mean? It's, it's easy to ignore the things that you experience. They're like, okay, well, that one failed. But how do you workshop failure? How do you take a failed spell that you really needed to work that didn't work and then make it work retroactively? You know what I mean? These are things that I, I learned to focus on myself and I had other people focus on. And so the combination of all of these things in the system that I've kind of put together um, can, I, and I really believe can take people to that next, uh, that next step in their life. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that is something that, you know, I have noticed with, with the community, you know, there, there are lots of people that are, you know, 
like you say, you look up to them and they're these adept magicians and, you know, they're huge badges and orders and whatever else. But then when you look at their actual mundane life, it's like, how, how have you been doing this this long? And, you know, these things aren't working out for you or, you know, you like, and then you see the other people, like you say that they're enchanting absolutely everything and they are living truly remarkable enchanted lives. So uh, do you think that it comes down to, um practicing rather than talking or do you think it's like an armchair problem or like what what is, what is one of the bigger things that you're seeing that is kind of the hold back for you know like like you say we're talking about occultists here that you know they might be 15 20 years in and they're they're not seeing you know the wow factor they're not seeing the thaumaturgy right I think that one of the, well, there, there are a couple things. One, the, 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 the easiest limiting factor I would say is that people just weren't told that they could do these things in the way that they need to be done. Like, you know, let's suppose um, you're, you're learning conjure hypothetically and your conjure teacher can do amazing things, but you know, she is in the same, you know, cabin that her grandparents built and her life doesn't revolve around smartphones and the internet and online business and these kind of things. She may not know how to teach you how to use the magic you're learning to get, to get the life you want. A lot of it is thinking both in, in, in thaumaturgic terms, but in the world today. I think another factor is the humility of having to admit, and this is hard for a lot of occultists, like I didn't do very well. Like at this, I let this slide. I let this go. I didn't do it. I fucked up. You know, it's, it, you, sometimes you got to admit that sometimes you got to sit back to yourself and be like, okay, I can still have the things that I want, but I didn't think to do it. Another thing is, um, people just aren't, they, they, they're just not choosing to enchant for it. And I know that sounds, that sounds like a really shitty thing to say. And a lot of my clients don't like to hear that, but you know, if, for example, you are chronically single, just so, so single, it's, it's depressing. And, you know, I ask you like, all right, well, have you done any magic for love or drawing? Like, obviously, yeah, you know, you should, you should get in shape and you should do all the mundane things to make this happen. But have you done anything on that level? And they're like, well, no, that kind of seems like cheating or no, I don't want to, you know, compel anybody. Or they, they'll make, they'll make like the large scale excuse of, well, I don't want to use a love spell on someone. And you go, that's not what I said. I asked if you had done any love or drawing magic. Have you tried to summon the kind of people you want to you? And they're like, well, no. And those limiting beliefs from love, money, happiness in general, those things stop people. You know, you can be, you can be so magical and still believe in your heart you you deserve a mundane life. And Huge. if you don't, if you don't choose it, you're gonna, I mean, look at look at like normal people, like regular people who don't do magic, who have extremely good lives. They all decided on some level that they should have it. And another thing I tell my clients is like the thing you want, it exists someone else is going to get it if you don't go get it you know that 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 crush you have someone else is going to get her she's not going to not get got it might as well be you my magical friend <laughs> so limiting beliefs and ego really right oh, yeah. sure sure and i don't it doesn't matter which plane you're on occultist regular people like you say um we all have the tapes of limiting beliefs yeah so it's to get past those it's it's work it is work and, and ego other, of course to realize oh i do need to do the work oh yeah and i mean that's another thing too um a lot of uh a lot of personal development programs even those that are um touted by occultists will another limiting belief i would say is that people don't do enough magic like we live in an interesting world. Like take road opening, for example. Road opening is, in my opinion, one of the most important kinds of magic today more than ever. Because in a digital world, in a world post, not, not, not like fully post, post COVID, but changed by COVID, there are roads being created and destroyed every 10 minutes. Like it's not enough to do a road opening once a month, or even in some cases, depending on what your business is once a week, you need to road open every day. You need to have a road opening practice. And it's never needed to be that way in the past because the world was never like it is now. I have one client who owns several businesses and he has a road opening altar, like a whole with, with a bunch of his spirits on it. And he moves pieces that are dignified as his businesses around like a chessboard every day. That's the first thing he'll do in the morning. 
and he will bind his his reality that way and really manifest great stuff. It's like, no, these this distributor is going to go for me and not my not my competitor for this business. My my employees are going to have a good day at this business. Blah blah blah. Right? Like he'll he'll really do it. And that was the thing that 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 that's a whole section of the program that I have is like how to road open scary well, depending on what your magic is, because people just they also don't know how hard they can push their magic because they've never had to. You know, I mean, for example, if you're road, like, let's say you um, have a St. Peter practice for your road opening, you know, well, have you asked him if he can road open and open roads that you failed to cross before? You know, he can, can, can have you asked your spirits to give you a second chance at uh, missed opportunities? You'd be surprised how well and how objectively that can work. You know, if your magic is working, you know, I mean, a lot of it is that people don't have the big ask that they should. I mean, you've been doing magic for say two decades. I think, I think you've put in enough long yards that you can ask for a miracle or two. <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> I would agree with that for sure. But that, it, it, and it just will keep going back to the limiting beliefs. They don't have the big ask because do we believe that we deserve it? Are we worthy of the big asks? Oh yeah. And another thing I'm brave about, enough to ask, then ask if you do believe, are you brave enough? Oh, sure. No, it takes, it takes, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of sand, a lot of gumption. You know what I mean? And uh, another thing I'll say is um, halfway through the program, every one of my clients that I've had so far, that's reached that point. We have to go through the lesson of like, now we have to figure out how to deal with what you're now getting, what you're now starting to gain, because they will have, I mean, they, they, they'll have straight up panic attacks and be like, Oh my God, it's working you know, or worse, um, their lives will be so changed. Like, you know, there's a lot of um, fairly uh, deserved derision for your, um, your lodge magic stereotype guy who finally learns magic that actually works or gets off his ass and stops being an armchair magician in his 40s or early 50s. And he gets one taste of real magic and he blows his life up, you know, leaves the wife and kids, goes off, has the most magical midlife crisis you've ever seen. <laughs> and I've had to tell clients, I'm like, do you want to be that guy? Because like you did it, you summoned all the things you wanted, but now you have to you have to keep them. It's like if, the thing I always tell them is it's it's half of it's what you can obtain, and then the other half is what you can maintain. And you have to, but this is also why I think those eight pillars are are crucial because we'll we'll talk about these things and be like, okay, these eight pillars are your north star. You know what I mean? They're your goal for what you want your life to be. Every decision you make with magic and every big mundane decision, you have to ask yourself, does it elevate all eight of these ships? Like, does it bring me? Because like looking at your physical health, for instance, um, there's a lot of magic that, that people can do to boost their health that they don't think to do. Because, you know, you have to admit that, you know, you, you need to do it. You know, maybe you're overweight. Maybe you need to be healthier. But people will, will take health as this sort of um, bar that they just, like, they, they just can't, the, the, the brook they can't cross, you know what I mean? They'll be like, well, I don't know, I tried once before to heal myself and it didn't work. I'm like, yeah, but have you tried what happens when you try to heal everything? Which is emotionally heavy and psychologically daunting. Like, the, you can't, I have a lot of respect for the people who've gone through my program and who've done well because they've had to face the darkest parts of themselves. Because when you ask yourself, when you start to succeed, and you start to really get what you want. You got to be, you, you, you come to terms with wanting things that are not so great. You know what I mean? Because you're still a person, you're still human. And a lot of occultists, I think, are deeply afraid of power corrupting them. So, because you know, I mean, how, many, how much media shows you the sorcerer who just goes too far, you know, loses, gets lost in the sauce. But like, you know, you got to have that sauce or else you are lost. So it's, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta tangle with that. You gotta tangle with the fact that, you know, you may want things that you didn't expect that you wanted or things that maybe you are worried about wanting. <laughs> like, I shouldn't want this. This is bad. This is, you know, cause you got, you got some people who are like, well, but what if I want to have more money than, than, than they think that they should hypothetically, if they're in that, that, that area where they can get there. You got to, you got to make your own peace with, with these things. And like I said, I have a lot of respect for my, 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 my students in this way, because they have, they've had to. Rewriting the tapes. We have been told too long. Oh yeah. Well, there's an awful lot of that. So when you start to approach these things, how, how do you start getting people 
to accept that they're kind of living in a poverty mindset and what are, you know, like, no, without obviously giving us your method, but what are a couple things that people can do to really kind of start working on that, you know, I do deserve this kind of mindset? Okay. Um, the very first question I ask anybody is in the last calendar year, has your magic produced something so remarkable that it could not have been anything besides magic? You know, because a lot of there are some occultists who will tell you the truth and be like, no, like, you know, yeah, I've done some interesting stuff and it, I, I believe it was magic, but maybe it wasn't. And I could argue that, I, you know, I was lucky or, or I have, you know, family money or whatever, you know. And so, but, they, but those who say yes, they're like, no, yeah, I did do something and it was magical. Then I'll sit them down, figuratively speaking, and be like, okay, well, if you can do that, what else can you do? Like, if you really did that thing, and I've told them that, and I have them do other exercises, like write down every miracle you performed that you can remember. Go back, take a night, an evening in, and really write down that list. And if you've been doing this long enough and you really, you really do it, you'll be surprised at the things you can pull up. And I'm like, reread that list every day for a week. And really sit there and be like, I did this. Like live in those memories as three-dimensionally as you can. That feeling of, holy shit, I did it. Like this work, the first time you ever got magic to work, the first big spell that made you go, this, I love this. I love this more than I could ever love any other thing I could do, you know, and that power, that freedom, the agency that comes with it, you know, when you, when you learn to live in it all over again, like you were as a kid, if you started when you were really young, like I did, uh, I remember being in high school and you know, goofy teenager, with the trench coat and the long hair. I was that guy a hundred percent and I was magic. Nothing is better than that feeling. And you want to talk about a feeling that can take you to the moon and back that feeling, reclaim that feeling in yourself. Like I have them do that. And I have them always go back to that. I mean, I have, I've had some clients where every session we will take the time. I'll take extra time and be like, read me the list again. Because each session, that list gets extra, extra items on it. You know, I'm like, read me the list again, do it again. And the, you know, you'll see that, 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 that those chains melt off of them. Little by little, link by link, every time that they do that, they free themselves more to really live in that magical world. And that's, that's one way you do it. Another thing you can do um, is honestly just uh, enchant for goofy shit. Like, to be honest with you, like enchant for even the most innocuous things, you know, um, as, as um, what's, what's his name? Neville Goddard, one of the law of attraction people, um, when asked about whether his stuff really worked, he would tell people, okay, fine, do my method, then ask to see a pigeon or a ladder or, or something that you don't see every day, but see, and, and if it keeps working, then clearly my shit works. Uh, so the same thing, but also enchant for things you think you don't deserve. See what happens. You know, you know, for example, if you're like, oh, man, I don't know, man, I'm not in the kind of shape I should be. My love life's a little bit, uh, I don't know. What's the worst that could happen? Enchant to meet that really cute girl. See what happens. What's the worst that could happen is the same thing. You ask her to dance, she says no. But you, but you saw her. And, do, and be specific. Be like, she's going to have blue hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> like She's going to have blue hair and, I don't know, uh, uh, a North Witch shirt on her. You know what I mean? Just, just the whole <laughs> thing. And... <laughs> And then you're like, oh, well, there it is. She's there. It's not even in Canada. And you know, you know, you're, you know, that worked a little bit. You know, she may still turn you down because, you know, maybe you're goofy, but you, that was a step in the right direction. So those are some things you can do like today to, to get out of that mindset. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I actually totally agree with that. Back in the day when I, we were really, really active over in the Chaos Magic group, we would have like contests every month, you know, like find a coin with your birth date on it. Find, find, okay. find a blue rose this week. Go out and find a half peeled orange this week somewhere out in the real world and just goofy, goofy shit, right? But it's forcing you to do the magic, to see the things, to get the results and, you know, when, after you see your 85th half peeled orange, you're like, fuck, how do I turn it off now? <laughs> I love that. That is, that is exactly what you got to do. <laughs> it gets the belief system working, right? Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, you can, you can be the most, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a Solomonic magician. I got all the bells and whistles. I even have the lion skin belt. Took me a while, but I even have that. And you can, <laughs> you can be that guy that summons those demons and 
even you, you maybe you're one of the ones who can even see them and you'll be sitting there staring across the circle at them be like a summa cumly form and then be too scared to ask for what you want and i have been there like i and i i've been doing this shit my, my parents are occultists you know what i mean i grew up in this shit and i've still had moments in my own life like that's the thing i do everything i teach because i had to learn it too because the reason why I got into spell casting for a living was uh, I had an economic emergency. And then I realized that I was that weirdo that only had one skill, which was magic. Like I didn't have any marketable skills. I, I worked at a food warehouse. You know what I mean? At the time, at the time when I, when I really started to do this, I, I mean, it was like, what was I going to do? The answer was, well, I got this, I can sell. Cause I've been doing this my whole life. But even then, you know, I, like I said, there have been times where I, I held back, you know, you feel yourself flinch in your heart away from the future or things you really want, despite having all these experiences. So, you know, none of us are immune to it because we have to contend with the world and our education in the world. And I firmly believe that um, we are educated to fear like habitually on like a cellular level, our, our own dreams and the things that we want. I mean, look at the people who will initially deride you for starting a business or believing in something, dressing weird, doing whatever the weird thing you're doing is. You know, it's, you're always going to get kickback from people who have no reason to give you kickback. And these aren't the people who are going to be like, no, man, I've been in business of my own for like 20 years and your idea is terrible. Maybe listen to that person, but not like some, some, some guy you knew in high school who's like, nah, you're not going to make it. Like, why would you have to say that? He has to say that to protect himself, but none of us are all of that immune to that thing because we're, sure. we're told to cling to safety in that same way well i mean if your magic doesn't make you safe then you know clinging to the safety of uh not believing in yourself is not going to help you know what i mean yeah absolutely so now dispelling the fear of moving forward is that what what do you what do you prescribe with that? Just get up and do it and see what you can get. Is that kind of just you know, the, the icebreaker? That, that's one of the icebreakers. I mean, another one is I talk to a cultist and I'm like, who's the most magical person you know? Who really lives that amazing life? You know, I mean, I, 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 know, I know several and I mean, it got to the point, I, I asked people too, I'm like, Who, who's so magical you're a little bit jealous, like in your heart? Like in your heart, you're like, man, I, I'm, I, should, I should work harder. I should be X person. I should be like that. And the kind of person who was like, you know, oh, I have never paid for the train. I, I know an occultist. Um, she, in, her, in the city in which she lives, there's like public transit all over and she's never paid for it. Never. <laughs> and I mean, and other people will confirm like who, who people who know the both of us should be like, they're like, no, she is never, ever. She doesn't even know what the people who take the fair look like. <laughs> like they've never even seen her and it's because she's like I don't feel like paying for that so I didn't she's one of the people by the way I talked to about like how to be really magical because she just is but you know it's like look at that person and and say to yourself what one person has done I can do like are like are they fundamentally do, do, are that much more special you know are they the seventh son of a seventh son of a seventh son well then maybe all right maybe maybe they got something you don't but even if they do that's not something you can't develop in yourself but you know it's you know figure that out and especially if you have spirits that you have connections with ask them be like all right how do i do this like how can i get from here to there and they may not tell you the answer that you want to hear because you know that's another thing too if spirits are only telling you what you want to hear you're probably delusional and not talking to them <laughs> properly but they'll tell you like okay well what do you want you know and they may tell you the hard truth but they're not going to tell you you can't have it because you fundamentally can especially if you've gone that far but it's like, you know, when it comes to dispelling those limiting beliefs, getting yourself moving, getting yourself active, half of the battle is just going out there and chanting for the goofy shit. The other half of it is really patterning uh, yourself after a mentor. And that mentor, and this is going to sound a little bit, perhaps a little woo-woo, that mentor can even be a fictional mentor. You know what I mean? You're like, I want, you know, I want this life that I read this character has in this book. Well, why can't you have it? You know, setting notwithstanding you can pretty much have whatever you want. You know, maybe you can't be Gandalf in Middle Earth because you're not a Valar, but you you can be something. You know what I mean? It's but it's it's about kind of marrying dreams with uh, with actionable strategy, and not 
and not limiting yourself to the, this is a pet peeve of mine too. And I, I, I will rant on this for hours if given the opportunity. The people who will say, oh, it's 10% magic and 90% mundane effort. I don't agree with that. I, I genuinely don't. I think that that's if your magic sucks, then it's, then it's that. I think if your magic is really good, then it's 100% magic and 100% mundane effort. You know, you know, set at the risk of pedantry. Like you can really, if your magic is really good and you're really pumping it, that effort is taken so much farther than if you're like, oh, I'm going to do a spell here and there and then mundanely bust my ass. No, you got, you got, you got to want that next level thing and understand that the work it takes to get there will make you, will, will, will challenge you, but you're going to be such a better magician. You want to be that person you're jealous of? Do this thing. You know, even, you know, or, or, or pay me to tell you how to do it. But, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but truly like do this thing you know really reach out and build that life for yourself and you will be that person that you're jealous of all of a sudden like you'll you'll wake up one day and be like shit i haven't paid for the train either <laughs> like yeah and you know there it is and you know it's kind of funny too like you can ask you can like i also recommend like if you have like a friend who's an occultist who has like one special skill like they're just so gifted at one thing I mean, it can't hurt to ask them why or ask your spirits why that person is so good. It's not, it's not a, a breach of their super secret sauce privacy necessarily to be like, what is, what is, what does he do that? I don't, you know, like, like ask one of your spirits, like mechanically when his spirits move around him, what are they doing? And then they'll tell you and you'll be like, Oh, can you do that? And they'll be like, well, yeah, of course I can do that. And like, well, why haven't you been doing that? Like, well, you didn't ask me to do that. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't know what to ask. Right. That's exa that's, exactly. That's you exactly, don't know what you don't know. But, that, but that's exactly the whole the whole kind of premise of why I decided to teach this is like, I did the research. I know pretty confidently what needs to be done. But another thing too is like, there are some unfortunate truths you're going to have to to swallow about the world. And this is one of those um, generational differences, I'd say, because like my father's generation um, would never. They he he lived in a very different world, you know, and he does Solomonic magic as well. And, you know, he, he never had to enchant for some of the specific shit that people in my generation have to enchant for. And I don't even know what the next generation is going to have to contend with as their world changes. But like, for instance, um, you know, something as simple as, here's a perfect one. A lot of job interviews uh, are remote now, right? If you're, if you're working for other people. Um, you know, you, you can wear your amulets and, you know, you can have your spirits and your familiars around you on Zoom or whatever, and that does have an effect, but it's never, it's never going to hit quite as hard, quite as quickly as when you're there in the room, you've got your condition oils on, maybe you've got your stuff, they're, they're, they're swimming in your energy, but if that, um, one, one, one newer method is like, does that business have a headquarters? Can you send an unmarked envelope with a hoodoo playing card that has all sorts of domination stuff in your favor into that mail room. And then every hand that it passes through, every person that opens the letter is like, oh, look at this weird thing. And they pass it around. That cements your influence over that place. You know, sometimes having to explain to a cultist, like your approach to the world is outdated and outmoded is it, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow because nobody likes to be told that. No one likes to be like, you're old. <laughs> like, no, we don't like to know that. No, no, and, and like I to. didn't like to know that either. That, like, that was a thing. Because a lot of the people I learned from, not a lot, half the people I learned from are younger than me, sometimes by a decade. Like when you're talking to someone a full decade younger than you who is leaps and bounds a more effective magician than you, 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 you find out a lot about who you are and how you feel about that. And you're like, shit, I've been doing this my whole life. And you're just like clowning me. <laughs> and you know but no, no reason you can't learn these things but so a lot of the time too it's 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 about telling people that like the world is more competitive in some ways the world is less kind economically environmentally like things are not getting better anytime soon at least and i would love to be wrong i want to be wrong about that so very badly but i don't believe i am things are not getting better anytime soon and economic inequality is growing the gaps between those who win and those who don't growing you want to be on the right side of the finish line. You know, as, 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 as mercenary as that may sound, you want to win. And Absolutely. if you have magic, you're going to need to be aggressive to win. And I'm not saying you need to like love slave, love spell somebody either to win 
or you need to like cripple your competition physically with a curse to win. But you are going to need to be aggressive. You're going to need to be more cunning in a lot of ways, you know? Like for example, um, when I was when I was only doing client work kind of under the table, because there's the there's the people who advertise online, like I'm I'm the conjure person, you can go to my website, and then there's the people who work word of mouth only. And there's and, and, and sometimes you you bleed between the two. There were a lot of conversations among the word of mouth crowd, especially because we used to have Zoom calls, you know, monthly, just talk, talk shop. A lot of people started getting scared because their love spells were failing, critically failing. I mean, these people were like, This is my specialty, this is what I do. I have been a the love doctor, you know what I mean? It's me. And they, their, their, their shit was failing. And uh, one of the people, and I wish I was clever enough to have said this, like this was not me, but I wish it was, where someone said, bro, do you really think that your, 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 your glamour is more powerful than Instagram right now? Do you, do, you, do you really believe that? And the guy was like, what do you mean? And he's like, dude, you're trying to hoodoo this chick who you've never met. You're using her printed out Instagram picture, which thousands of people have liked and paid attention to in various ways. Uh, and you're using that link alone. And you think that like the fact that her DMs are full of 50 dudes, two of whom are actually attractive and one of whom's actually interesting is, you know, you're, you're fighting against that. Like you're fighting against that tide. Your method is insufficient. Now, are there methods that absolutely, there are methods that absolutely work. You're just changing your mindset, changing your strategy, changing your approach. But like, you know, these, these are some hard truths that people are, are either going to accept or they're not. That, that's totally fair, actually. I had, I had a client the other day, and that, this totally makes sense and cues on, is they were trying to do money draw work, and it just wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. I'm like, well, what the fuck are you doing? Okay, well, I've got an enchantment in a cash box, and I've got an enchantment in my wallet. And I'm like, how often do you put money, like physical, real yeah. paper money in your wallet anymore? How many bills a month do you put in your cash box? Well, none. I, I get all e internet e-transfers and PayPal and whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, there's where you need to enchant. You, you don't want to be enchanting that wallet that's always going to sit empty anyway, right? So that, that's absolutely it. I mean, it is, it, is about, it is about changing your modality, you know, your method of enchantment. And it doesn't mean that the old stuff, the old school stuff isn't still, it's great, but it's about, aiming it differently well and it's like for what we came up with was instead of putting in the cash use the credit card that is linked to the paypal account and put that in there so then yeah. it's got a direct link to where the money's actually going to come in right and oh, then and boom sure. what do you know a week later it's it's working <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say i'm sure i'm sure that, that they cleared it up immediately no but like but like that's the thing and what, what i also find interesting is that a lot of um seasoned occultists who again are excellent magicians like i i want that clear like they are the real deal they're having this difficult time accepting new modalities of things because they feel as though and this is why you have to be a lifetime learner like honestly you have to maintain that i am never done like, like you know like i i do this shit for a living i always take courses i always buy and read new books i'll be the guy who's like oh you got a 30 dollar course on something i already know about cool because if i learned one thing it was worth that 30 dollars. you know what i mean because i can add that to my practice but you have some people who are like no i did the work like I, I trained i learned i did all this stuff and it's like cool that's great but when you stop everything stops you know i think another thing i tell my clients is that everything has momentum you know nothing is static but magic has a flavored momentum you know you every kind of magic you do every kind of spirit you do um patterns the momentum of the thing you bring into your life in its own way but as but you know if you if you stop moving things grind to a halt and that was you that was your doing you did that you chose that yeah. and in it maybe not necessarily chose it knowingly sure but you still did right it. yeah and so well, then you need these conversations and you need the community to go oh we have moved ahead we have to change from just i keep putting things in the cash box but nothing happens and then we need the new generation to say oh well because we don't use the cash box anymore or whatever the newness is to go have aha moments to go oh if we just switch it yeah. here well and i think i think the cool thing that you can look at is just the way that 
technology and industry and everything is evolving so fast now it's evolving at a rate that humankind has never ever seen so like let's look at the medical field for instance you know if you want to talk about people that should always be continually learning are you going to feel better with the guy that just got out of med school and has the brand new medical science for your condition or are you going to want to see the doctor that the last time he cracked open his book was in 1950 and he passed with a 75 percent average you know what i mean like <laughs> no no you <laughs> No, you're, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny too, because we do live in a world where like, you can just get so much stuff on demand. You know, I joke with a lot of other occultist friends of mine that like, there was some powerful organization of sorcerers that created Etsy behind the scenes <laughs> so that there was a witch shop. So you can be like, yes, I do want a Blackthorn shillelagh mailed to me, <laughs> you know, in two days. I would love that. You know what I mean? Or like, you can be like, all right, I need... You know, because like you'll, you'll read like an old hoodoo pamphlet and be like, oh, me, oh shit, I need like four padlocks, Amazon. You know what I mean? Like just instantly you'll go and you'll do all this stuff. But like people, see, that's the thing. It's, it's this double-edged sword, right? Because though uh, you got a lot of old heads and I've been one of those people in, in my own way who've been like, oh no, you need to practice the fundamentals. You need to learn the old magic. You need to learn this. And you do, you should, you should learn magic that works. But you also have people who are like, okay, but like, why do I need to do things that are harder mechanically than they have to be? And th that, that, that sweet spot, that middle ground is something that's very difficult to find and constantly needs to be sought out if you want your, your, your stuff to work. Because, you know, I mean, as I said, you have people who are fantastic, who, you know, if you, because another thing I ask my clients too, and I'm like, all right, let's 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 do a psychic exercise let's go into a trance let's summon the version of you that first learned that magic was real however young you were would he or she be proud of you now would he or, and, and you have people who who get distraught when the answer is no sometimes you know what i mean they're like shit no and like all right well don't you owe it to them to give them what you promised because you know there's a lot in magic about the promises we make and the promises we break and, you know, they're, they're, you know you, we have unfinished business with ourselves and that's not often addressed in magic. And the, the moment you fix those things or begin to fix them, you see things shake loose. You know, things become so much easier because there are parts of you that are no longer fighting you. And that's a lot of another thing that we do in this method. It's, you know, we, we go deep, you know, we, you, you talk to parts of your soul and not, and, you know, in a, in a literal way, in a very much like this is gonna be in your scrying mirror today kind of way. And, you know, you do it until it works because that's something we get, we get homework in this, in this thing, you know, you, you will work, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do it. But also, you know, I've had a few of my clients be like, I've done more magic in the last year than I've done in my life. Just to spell after spell after spell building enchantments. That's something we strategize what you want. You know what I mean? Cause I'm there with you the whole time being like, okay, let's workshop this. Cause sometimes you just need another set of eyes and another perspective to give you a really creative idea. Sure. I've learned so much from my own students too. Like I have gotten so much better every time I have a session with anybody. I learned something new, which is I, I admit a thing I enchanted for. You know, I, I was like, I want this to make me better and better and better. That's and, awesome. Well, and two, for you to be good enough to teach something, you hone it more and more and oh, more. Yeah. It, it, you just become so much better because you, you're coming up with ideas that you didn't even think of before. They're giving you ideas you never thought of. And it's, you know, iron sharpens iron and becomes sharper together, right? So it's well, that's it. That's it. And like I said, I do everything I teach. Like every time my clients go through these exercises, I go through these exercises. No, not always live with them, but I do it myself. Because these are practices that when I teach you, you carry with you for the rest of your life. Like you never stop doing them. You know, there's, there's practices where we, we, we take a sort of inventory of our soul. And, you know, you, you, don't, you shouldn't stop doing that because your needs will change. You know, you at say 40 are going to have very different needs and goals, magically, mundanely, et cetera, all the eight, all the eight columns than you will at 60. When you're 60, you should still be growing. You should be like, all right, cool. When I'm 80, man, I'm going to be killing it. When you're 80, you're like, when I'm 100, I'm going to be killing it. When you're 100, you're like, when I am a ghost that is like a living lich <laughs> god king, I'm going to be killing it. And then after you're dead, I might summon you and be like, you killing it? And you're like, I'm killing it. Like, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's so good. 
So we've kind of covered, you know, like with your source risk method, what, what you do and how we figure out that, you know, people are usually not enchanting enough. So now what happens when you get clients that are on the other side of the coin and perhaps they do live magical lives and they are enchanting a lot, but they're not getting the results that they are aiming for you know they're getting little bits here and little bits sure. there and you, you know what you know what i'm talking about you, yeah sure well, we've so all seen the, these people right yeah but then you have the common sense uh, conversations you have which are equally difficult because you know you got you got people on both sides you know like i said you got people who don't enchant enough and that's hard for them you got people who are magical as hell they're living a magical life and you have to have the, some of the hard conversations with them because for example if they're like my wealth goals are six figures and you're like my brother in christ you work at Subway. Like <laughs> this is going to be an uphill battle for you because while I do believe in magic above all else, like you, you may never find someone that believes in magic as hard as I believe in magic. Like it's that storybook shit for me every day. But I do also admit that like, you know, your life puts limitations on it because of things you chose, you know, and we go through that. Like, you know, if you're like, okay, yeah, you, you want a lot of money and you're working uh, a very mundane job that doesn't pay you very well. And you know, all the, all the money magic in the world that you're gonna throw at it is probably, I say probably because I have seen rare circumstances where people punch the world with the same spell for like years and years. And eventually reality was like, fine, I will give you something. <laughs> but you know, are you, are you gonna be that guy who does the same wealth spell every Thursday for three years? I mean, if you are, man, more power to you, but I, I don't have that in me. But like, you know, you have to tell them like, all right, we have to make an actionable mundane plan. You know, you want to start a business. How do you start a business? Do you know anything about that kind of thing? You know, you want the, you want the, the lover, maybe hitting the gym isn't the worst idea. You know, you want the, uh, you know, you want to give, the other thing, we, we go into like mental health a lot. You know what I mean? It's like, where, ha, well, when was the last time you asked yourself, like, am I doing all right? Like, am I okay? Am I good? Like. Because a lot of people don't, especially in this game. You're like, oh, I should, I should be fine. It's like, dude, you're talking to spirits and bending reality and doing all this weird shit all the time. You're probably not fine. Like, you know, a lot of us are less fine than we think. I mean, I, I've had teachers who were straight up crazy, like batshit crazy, amazing. But like, you know, you, you almost pitied them for how crazy it made them. So, you know, talking to yourself about that, you know, because some people they want, they want some, and, and again, they, they don't want to admit that like there are, there. everyone's got hard yards. You know what I mean? Everyone's got limit. Everyone's got something that's the hard thing for them. You know, maybe it's, um, you know, that you're doing all this magic and you want to have this better life, but you suck with people. Like you're just, you're just <laughs> fucking off putting, you know what I mean? Like you're, <laughs> come, on, come on man, with a, with a hat like that, please. It's a conversation starter. You know what I mean? <laughs> But no, but for real though, like maybe you're off-putting. Maybe, you know, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to just like read up a book or two on like how to win friends and influence people. You know what I mean? Like just like be chill. You know, don't be so stressed. Learn how to calm down, you know? Because like you have to have like the perfect middle ground between the not so great advice of just be yourself and the advice of be the best version of yourself. Like you can be a pretty chill version of yourself right now and be getting better and not holding it against yourself that you're not where you want to be. Because that's another thing too. A lot of people are bitter that they're not where they want to be. Because you also have to accept like what you, what, what you didn't, or rather what, what was not your fault. And like, for example, if you're, if you live in America, america.com.org.gov, uh, you, you may have a crippling amount of student loan debt that may destroy you for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? You, you were told your whole life, you know, uh, get a degree and the money will follow and follow your dreams. And then you know, the rug was pulled out from under so many of my peers. And they're like, oh shit, I'm like $150,000 in debt and I can't get a job. And that bleak heaviness settles on them. And they're like, I will never have what I want. And you got some of them, I mean, they believe that. They're like, well, fuck it. Like I may be magical, but like, what do I do against that wall of debt? And the answers are often not what you want to hear. You know what I mean? Like sometimes the answer is, okay, you're going to have to make more money and pay off that debt. Or maybe you're going to have to expatriate to another country and never return. Cause I, I do know a couple of people who did that. <laughs> they were like, you know, I, I, and, and, you know, they're, they, uh, they're not coming back. 
because <laughs> like, they're like, fuck it, I'll, I'll start over somewhere else. You know, but maybe you have to. Maybe uh, an extreme solution like that is what you need because the world is extreme. The world is bizarre. No one prepared you for this. No one, I mean, sure. it's fascinating to me when I talk to like someone in their early 20s or who's like 19 and they're just at peace with this weird shit that's happening all the time because they grew up in the, in the thick of it. I'm over here like, I didn't have a cell phone until college. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I remember using the internet on like the family computer when I was a kid, you know what I mean? Whereas like, you know, you got people now and they're like, oh, I have a smartphone and I'm six. <laughs> like, and you're like, Jesus. But you know, but so it's okay to be like, the world changed really fast. I wasn't ready. I need to start over. I need to build my strategy for how to live in this world mundanely as well as magically all over again. And sometimes taking a step back, taking a month to really, you know, ask like very basic questions of the world. That's what I tell people too. I'm like, you know, you ever look up like on YouTube, like how to start a business? Like, you know, even something simple, like what, you know, the 10 things I wish I knew before I did X, you know, maybe, maybe watch a couple of those, maybe take some notes, you know, <laughs> just, but forgive yourself. That's another thing too. Like, this is like a really woo woo thing, but like, let it go. You know, yeah, you were responsible for the things you did and didn't do but you can, you know, you're magic. If you're paying me, you're magic. And that means you have a leg up. You can turn the ship around. I will help you. And I promise if your magic is any good and you, you, you are diligent, you will turn the ship around. It'll be hard, but you'll be, you will be a God compared to you now when you walk out the other side of the first year, but it's going to be hard. You just have to be willing to do the work, right? Oh, yeah. Once you step up and say, yeah, let's do this, then let's get at it. Absolutely. Do you find that that is also kind of a hindrance that a lot of people have is, you know, they'll, they'll enchant for things and then they turn down the opportunities because they aren't able to recognize them or, oh, you know, oh, is, is, that, is that kind of a big deal? Like oh, that's constantly. something that I know I've done it oh, numerous so same, times, same, right? Same, man. I mean, like, dude, I... I can't even tell you. What's funny is what really kills me, and this is the thing I've been guilty of, is sometimes you will have succeeded in the past at striking while the iron was hot. And then you enchant for something similar and you 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 choke for whatever reason. Because you're like because a lot of it is figuring out where you are in your life. You know, pers personal story. Um, when I was in college, I wasn't scared uh, because I was in I was in a band, you know, I was talking to girls all the time, was not scared. I would do like I want to meet a girl who looks like this, this, and this. And I was not scared to walk up to her because I was in a band. I was cool. But you know, let's let's suppose you fast forward to 30 pounds of COVID weight later, hypothetically, and uh, you know, you enchant for that and you're like, shit, man, I'm not who I used to be. And you're like, well, why not? Aren't you? You know, that 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 fear and that that analysis paralysis that comes with a fixation on your current situation is I think what gets a lot of people. Cause you know, you've always had the client that paid you to summon them a job and they didn't go out looking for a job. They just stayed at home in, the mo in mom's basement, just chilling on the internet. And you're like, all right, well, I didn't get the job. And you're like, well, did you go looking? Did you put on that? No, I'm like, bro. Or sometimes they'll be like, well, you know, yeah, actually I met a guy at a restaurant and I overheard him talking about this job I'd have been perfect for. And I was like, and you walked up to him clearly and said, you know, hey, I heard you talking about, I, I'm kind of your guy. He's like, well, no, I didn't. Because fear is, is a real thing in all of us. You know what I mean? And, and I, saw, I saw a few fear things online to this end where it was like, you know, you'll have a powerful witch who will summon spirits of the dead, but be afraid to make a doctor's appointment on the phone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know? that, that that's you know, I mean, shade thrown, but that's real. Like, you know, you got people who are like, yes, I would absolutely rather go to the graveyard at night than make a doctor's appointment on the phone. <laughs> For sure, fear is fear is paralyzing. Oh, fear absolutely. is such a liar. Fear is. I actually have it on my bulletin board in my office at home, and it's fear is a fucker because it just messes with you. But the thing is, it's it's also this integral part of us. Like, it never goes away. Because that's another thing I, I I tell people. I'm like, you know, summon the spirit of what your fear looks like, you know, in whatever psychic or divinatory medium you do, like summon that thing. And it will appear to you in different shapes constantly because it's protean, it's a chimera. It will always change depending on your situation because it's such an integral part of you. It only dies when you do. 
So you need to learn to walk with it in the world because it never stops. No matter how confident you are, the best you can do is for it to be so far behind you that you can't hear it. But it will that's always, very good. It'll always creep up on you. And that's okay. That's part of the world. I, I guarantee you a, a sorcerer in the Renaissance had the same experience. It was a different world, but you know, they feared something. I guarantee you that, you know, that PGM sorcerer that had to go to the, the lonely crossroads at midnight where there was no electric lights and there were bandits and you might die. She's probably scared. She's probably like, this is going to suck, but <laughs> I have to do this. You know, that's part of life too. You know, accept it. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you surrender to pain, you can pass through it easier. Feel that fear as, as keenly as you can for a moment. Give it a second. Be like, fine, you get this one thing. I'll feed you this one thing and you will leave me alone. You find that that, 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 that actually helps a lot. I like that. I think that's something too, that people don't realize as well is that, you know, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's pushing forward anyway. Right? Oh, absolutely. So, and so, you know, maybe that's something that you could enchant for to, you know, be able to harness that courage, right? I mean, Mars magic certainly works, you know, uh, for that among other things. And but you know that that's the thing. I mean, there's there there's so much magic to help you in all kinds of aspects of your life that you never thought. You know what I mean? You know, enchanting your mental state. Um, you know, I mean, shit. I, I even had one friend of mine who went, who, who was who was scared to go get therapy, and so he went to the grave of a psychiatrist and made friends with that ghost, and had therapy sessions with that ghost every week. And that was how he did it. That was, that was the way it worked for him and uh, night and day change in that dude's life. So, you know, it's, you know, find, find the way. way. Yeah, <laughs> you find, yeah, find the way to do it and you will do it. But, you know, there's a lot to be said about, um, about just having the, the willpower to, can, to every day get up and find those ways. Because like I said, it doesn't stop. For sure. So now if you had one piece of advice to give every magician out there to light a fire under their ass and under their workings, what would it be? Um, well, to repeat myself a little bit, the world is not getting any better. Like every year things get precipitably, precipitably worse. I mean, just that's that you don't need to be psychic to see that. Maybe your life hasn't gotten particularly bad, hypothetical person but it might, and you see other people around you that it is. And if that's not enough to make you, who already knows that you can do magic, who already knows that it's real, you, you don't have the burden of proof anymore. If that, if that isn't enough to spur you on to being greater, then maybe the question of, would the version of you that started this be proud of you now? Maybe that will be, make him or her proud and win. Because if you don't win, you will lose and you do not want that. That's great. I like that a lot. <laughs> I like to win. <laughs> well, there you go. And you know what? You should win. <laughs> I like that. I like to win a lot, actually. It's one of my posts today. <laughs> there you go. I think that's that, that that's an attitude most occultists would do well to cultivate. You know, you gotta like to win because it feels good to win and it's okay to enjoy that feeling. Absolutely. I think so anyway. Totally agree with that. Absolutely. So now you are offering, I see also you're doing cardamassy readings, you are doing individual spell troubleshooting, and then you of course have your wonderful sorceress method. So right. basically these are pretty much straightforward. Are you doing readings for any reason other than to troubleshoot things? Or like, are you doing just general readings as well? You, you got a question, I'll answer it. Perfect. That's awesome. And then spell troubleshooting that's pretty straightforward i think you've covered pretty much everything with that for oh yeah for what we're doing and yeah so i think this is a service that really anybody could use i mean if you're able to get busted through any of those blocks in your life or you know that that second opinion i, I mean alex is your man <laughs> i certainly I think so, so. <laughs> Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I, I love the, the perspective on it. And, the, you know, you can, you can be the most magical motherfucker in the world, but if you aren't doing shit about it, you're not doing shit about it. And it's, agreed, agreed. No, it's great to be here. Appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you. So people can find you practicalocult.com. That's where everything is done, or do you have your own website as well? Or no, for 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 now, I have just the practical occult one. Um, look for a blog in the future for similar opinions to this. But oh, fabulous! We will watch for that. <laughs> Let us know when that's ready to roll. I shall. All right. Thank you so much. This was lovely. I liked every minute of it. Oh, thank you guys. Great time. <laughs>